All right, great. Well, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Sorry for a little, uh, we're a little out of sync here, but that's okay. We're just going to uh, continue with the product presentation part of this uh, Lunch and Learn. My name is Kathy Sherman. I am one of the sales engineers here at Action Associates, and I'm excited to present Acumatica and give you some of the look and feel of the product, and hopefully I'll be able to, um, I've got a couple systems going, so uh, hopefully I'll be able to um, have a smooth presentation here for you today. Um, one of the things Gib didn't, didn't get to yet, and he will, um, this is a, a total um, SaaS-based program, so I am entering this through the cloud. We also have an app version, and I'm going to be showing that in a, in a little bit here, just to give you a chance to see how you can access, truly access Acumatica uh, from any device at any time. So today I'm on my laptop. You should see Acumatica in the upper left-hand corner, and this is my home base. So whenever I want to get to what I call my home screen or, or my dashboard, I would click on the logo. So presumably down the road, this would be your logo, and you would be seeing your dashboard. Our dashboards are role-based. So today I'm in a project overview dashboard, and the things that you see on this dashboard uh, pertain to just that, construction and project focus. So as you look down my dashboard, you know, cost by project, you'll see that Acumatica gives you the ability to have different types of dash parts. So whether it's a chart or a graph, and I'm going to scroll down a little bit, I also have a job site camera. So we give you the ability if you have a subscription for a job site camera and you want to integrate that URL for that product into Acumatica, we give you the ability to do that. It's very easy to tie in a web page. And it could be weather, it could be anything like that. Um, if I click design in the upper right-hand corner, that's what opens up this. This is where you can actually design and you can tailor your dashboard to maybe what you want to see, your role in the company, things like that. I, as I mentioned, uh, we are able to do this on role-based dashboards. So when it opens it up, you can see that I now have some widgets that are, that are available here. So a pencil, I'm kind of in the middle of the page here by this line chart. And the pencil, if I open up this widget property, it's what gives me the ab ability to configure this. So let's say instead of this bar, maybe I wanted, oh, I'm going to just say funnel. Okay, and I'm going to finish. And it's that easy to be able to, you know, if, if you wanted something in a different view, whether it's the funnel, whether it's the line, the bar, very easy to change that configuration. This is built on, if you think about it, a, a lot of what we call generic inquiries in this system. So if you're looking for some information and the inquiry doesn't exist, it's, it's fairly easy to create it so that you're truly seeing what's important to you and regardless whether you're a project manager or someone in accounting or you're an owner, uh, we would be able to either help you build these or teach you how to build these yourself. As I scroll down, I'm going to get all the way to the bottom. I don't want to make you dizzy. But you can see here, this is where you can add a new widget or a dash part. So when I click on that, and I wanted to show you what's available in terms of what you can pull into this, to your screen, whether it's a, jar, a chart at the top whether it's a data table. Embedded page, that's where you can bring in a URL. Uh, pivot table, that's one of a, a fairly recent enhancement to be able to bring in a pivot table if you're a sort of a Power Excel user and, and you like pivots, you're able to bring that in as well. Um, or a Power BI tile or something like that if you're into some specific KPIs that you wanted to bring in. Go ahead and cancel out of that. I just wanted to show you how that's possible. And I'm going to get out of design mode here. And now I'm back to home screen. So now I have my funnel. I changed that. Uh, you're always going to have a key. So if I click on my key, I'm able to see what color, in this, in this case, relates to what projects. So I'm able to get to the details there. And you can see here, I don't know if you notice them hovering over at the top of the funnel. It says updated one minute ago. This was a recent enhancement. I'm in the latest version of Acumatica. And we now give you the ability to determine how often you want these, these dash parts to um, update. You know, some you might want 
latest and greatest up to the minute. Some you might not need to refresh that often. Maybe some you want, you know, daily or hourly. So it's a, it's a nice enhancement to know that you don't have to refresh the screen. You can see it's it's updating as I go. So pretty powerful tool there. Other thing I wanted to scroll down, uh, I have here a pivot table called Budget Summary. So what I'm able to do is I'm able to uh, change my um, projects. So if I click on my little funnel there, I am right now I'm focused on a hotel project. If I wanted to, maybe I wanted to clear this, maybe I wanted to focus on, oh, I'm gonna say my restaurant project and click OK. So now I'm looking at different information here related to my pivot for a specific project. So you're able to you know, compare, monitor your projects. Uh, you can, um, as you saw me there, um, sort and restrict. A uh, very powerful uh, tool there. All right, so that's a little bit about the dashboard, how you can change the design, how you can change the look and feel of some of this information. Uh, you can see some of these have hyperlinks. It's kind of a bluish color with a line under it. This gives you the ability to drill down. So if I wanted to drill down, I can drill down into this hotel project. I can just click on that, on that hyperlink. It's going to take me into the project screen for this hotel project. And I'm gonna get back to this in a little bit, but I just wanted to show you the drill down capabilities. We're gonna walk through this project screen here in a minute. But a couple other things I wanted to show you first before I leave my home screen here. Uh, the tiles on the left-hand side, these are our workspaces. Uh, some folks like to call them the modules. So you would only be seeing the modules or the workspaces that you have security rights uh, to get to. So if you're not in finance or payroll and you don't, you know, you don't need to have access to these, they would not be shown here on the left-hand side. Uh, we do have the ability to integrate with products such as Procore. You can see I have a Procore integration here on the left. So if you're a Procore user, uh, just know we also have the ability um, and this integration is already built out. Uh, so as you can see um, up at the top, I have one called Favorites. So what Favorites is, is as you go through the different modules, uh, you have the ability to pick your favorites, something you're using day in and day out, and maybe you wanna make it a little bit easier to just come to your favorites and do your construction work or your finance work. So this is what you've gone through um, and taken from the individual modules or, or workspaces in this case. And you can see some of these have stars on the left-hand side. So if it's starred, if I determine that I wanted something starred, run project billing, uh, these, that's what determines whether it gets to my favorites, if it's start or not. So like I said, just a quick way to be able to access all of your favorite parts of Acumatica and be able to toggle in and out from this one screen. We also have service management. So if your company has a service division and you do both construction and service, or maybe you only do service, um, I'm gonna go into this a uh, little bit toward the end there and just at least show you um, a dispatch board just so you can get an idea of our service as well. All right, before I move on, go ahead and leave. Um, coming back to my home screen, you'll see up at the top, I have a search window. So Acumatica has a very powerful search feature. It gives you the ability to key in a number, let's say you're looking for a specific invoice or inventory transaction or check or, or whatever that might be, you're able to just key that in, hit enter, and it's gonna give you results. So I typed in just now 1005, and you can see <clears throat> I have some results here. Was it, a, am I looking for a specific shipment? Am I looking for an accounts payable check? Am I looking for this project issue? And from here, I'm able to click and narrow down and get to whatever I was looking for, whether it was accounts payable, bill right here. So it's a very powerful way. Think of it as the Google search of Acumatica. It's a very powerful way to find that transaction without having to go into the different modules and into you know, accounts payable invoices and maybe find it that way. Not only does it look through transactions and profiles, 
if it relates to an item on the menu, so I happen to know um, this form, Maker Line has a 1005 in it. So if it's something related to a menu item, it's going to be listed here. If it is something on a help topic, which I don't have any for 1005, all of my help topics would be listed here. And if I had any files in the system that I named with 1005, I know I have quite a few of them here. You can see that that would be a way to get to a file if you had a file in the system. So like I said, very powerful tool to be able to um, look across the Acumatica database. Another powerful uh, feature of Acumatica is if you continue to the right on this blue bar, you can see where it says revision to products. So if I click on that, it expands a tree. So what this is, is the ability to set up different companies, different uh, legal entities, branches, et cetera. And depending on how you might need to have those consolidated is how we would direct you and help you set those up. So in this case, what you're looking at is my highest level is revision to capital. That is one of my companies. I have a company right under it called revision to products. Those are, these are EINs, legal entities. And under products, I have two branches, one called retail, one called wholesale. Then I have a services company right under that and two more branches called services east and west. Uh, so I can have, uh, you know, like I said a minute ago, how, however your legal structure is created and however you determine you need that to roll up, we can accommodate that in Acumatica. Um, also one item to note, a legal entity can be at the company level. A legal entity can also be at a branch level. So very powerful, and I, I know we've run into some uh, companies with hundreds and hundreds of legal entities and we have uh, been able to accommodate all of that. So also makes it very nice when you go to produce consolidated balance sheets and income statements, and you're able to do that with a click of a button um, out of Acumatica. So uh, if you're one of those companies with a lot of those kinds of structures, or those kinds of structures, I just keep that in mind here. Uh, to the right of that, the date, this is the date that the system date or the date the transactions today will go in. Uh, if you have admin rights and you would need to backdate this, maybe you were on vacation for two weeks and you wanted to backdate it into a, a different time, uh, you would be able to change that, enter your transactions and bring it back to the current date. Uh, just to wait, like I said, for that vacation type of scenario or if someone's out for a while um, to get uh, to save keystrokes is really probably the best way to, to describe that. To the right of that, my question mark. So this is help, as I'm sure you, you probably have seen this maybe in some other systems. Uh, help is going to be tailored to the screen you're on. So when I click my help, you can see my ideas here are donut, line chart, column chart, you know, all of the things that relate to dashboards and procedures and concepts around the dashboard. All right, and that is kind of everything I wanted to touch on on my dashboard. Uh, before I leave dashboards entirely, I'm gonna click on my dashboards and show you here in my sample company, all of the other types of dashboards. I mentioned a, minute, a, a bit ago that they were role-based. So you can see I have a CRM. We have a C full CRM that is built in Acumatica as one of our uh, modules here. Uh, the finance area. So if you were, uh, let's say, a controller and wanted to go ahead and click on this one, um, just to show you, you're now looking at some different types of information. You're looking at financial information. You're looking at your cash position. You're looking at overdue balances. Uh, and then you have the ability, you know, if you want to, on the lower left, do some hyperlinks to your financial statements. You know, you can have those land here so you don't have to go up to finance and, and run your statements. You can basically run them right here uh, from your dashboard. Uh, and then I mentioned field service, but I'm gonna go ahead and click on this diagram because this kind of shows the map of what's available in field service. Uh, you have the ability, if I, if I start here, you know, a, a call comes in, or if you wanted to start with a quote 
and a sales order, you can do that. Uh, these can be pushed to a service order. We also have the ability to do contracts. I know a lot of service work uh, requires recurring service work and contracts. And then from our work orders, service orders, we can then create appointments, schedule our staff, and then all important invoicing out of there. So just important to note that we do have this entire workflow in the field services area. Won't get too deep into that today, uh, but just wanted to, like I mentioned, provide a, a snapshot of what that might look like for your company. Um, lastly, before I leave my dashboards, I'm going to go into project manager here. So it's project related as well, similar to what you saw on the other screen, but here it's just maybe a little bit more detailed information. Uh, do I have tasks that I'm assigned to? I can assign colors to these tasks. Are they active and in good standing is going to be my red or my, um, my green, I apologize. Am my red are going to be, are those late? Are those underutilized employees? Or are those unprofitable projects? Things like that, things you want to stare, stare you in the face when you open up this screen um, by your color choice. Uh, in the middle, items to approve. So if you had, um, I'll go into this in a bit, we have routing and approval. So you can set up different routing and approval rules, whether it's for um, expense reports, receipts, whether it's for change orders or change requests, whether it's for project issues, you name it, accounts payable invoices, we have the ability to set up routing and approval rules within Acumatica. And so um, in this case, I have a dash part called uh, my items to approve. So I know what's sitting in my queue waiting uh, for me to click and approve. Project issues, maybe that's a, a, a main uh, concern in your company you want to be able to know, you know, when something's going on, uh, you know, going south on your job, when there's some type of an issue. So this might be something that's on your dashboard if, if you are a type of a, a supervisor or project manager. All right, so now I promised I'd go into a project and I'm gonna go ahead and click on the other tab where I'm in my hotel project. So this is a specific project now. So we went from the global dashboard to now we're focusing on one specific project. And uh, the first thing I'm going to point out is the word template. So we have the ability, as I click on some of these tabs, um, if you had similar types of uh, projects, maybe there are similar types of what we call divisions or, or tasks or subjobs, you can set up the shell of a project so, so that every time you go to that, do that similar type of job, you would call in that, that template. So let's say you had a hotel, you do a lot of hotels, and you have a template for hotels. You would call in that template, and then it would pre-fill a lot of the information if you had a standard uh, way you wanted to set up those types of projects. So I'm on my summary tab, and here you're determining how you're gonna bill out, at what level, are we gonna bill out a task or a cost code, and I, I won't get into all the specifics, I'll keep this high level. Uh, start and end dates, project manager, sort of the general type information that you would have with a project. And if I scroll down a little bit, here's where you're gonna be setting up your billing. How am I billing? Am I gonna be billing monthly? Am I gonna bill on demand? Am I billing quarterly? You know, what does that look like for this this project. And a little bit further down, you'll see something called the billing rules and allocation rules. So billing rules, that's where you're gonna determine how you're gonna bill this project. So within Acumatica, we have the ability to create as many billing rules as you need. Um, this project has progress billing, more of your AIA type billing, but we also have the ability if maybe you did uh, time and materials or some other uh, cost plus type of a structure and you needed unique billing rules, we can handle that in Acumatica. Right above that, you'll see allocation rules. We also have the ability to create allocation rules by job. So if you needed to allocate some, oh, I don't know, monthly indirect expenses to a project or something like that, know that that can be handled with our allocation rules. On the right-hand side of your screen, under retention, 
click this little arrow. We have the ability to set up different types of retention, whether it's standard, whether it's stepped, whether it's somehow capped or capped at an item. Just know that we can handle that within Acumatica as well. All right, continuing up, I'm going to skip here and go to my balances tab. So think of the balances as a mini P&L statement for this project. Okay, so you're going to have, and you determine your expense categories. This is part of the implementation of Acumatica. What are your account groups that you're going to want to see when you come into this screen? I have the labor material, other subcontract. And the other thing you're going to determine as you go and look at these different screens is how do I want my columns configured? The screens are going to all have what I call a column configurator here. If I click on it, you're going to see the available columns on the left and the selected columns on the right. So if there's ever something that you didn't need, maybe there was a column that you really didn't want to see, I'm going to go say uh, actual plus open committed. So I can just toggle to the left-hand side, click OK, and it's going to change my view in the background. So just know that column configurator is going to be on all of the screens. Uh, you're also going to see these two boxes, view transactions and view commitment details. So if I ever wanted to drill down and see what makes up a, a line item, I would highlight the row and I would click view transactions. And then you're going to get a, a pop-up box where it's going to show you all of the information that makes up that number and I can drill down, I can expand on that and I can get all of the detail related to that line and the same would work for any commitment. If I wanted to highlight a row and view my commitment details, it's going to work the exact same way and now I'm going to um, see that within this <clears throat> I'm looking at my purchase order. Continuing on uh, this, this ribbon here in the middle, you can see all of these different tabs. In the essence of time, I'm, I'm not going to be able to go into every single one of them, but I will point out a couple important ones that, that I uh, feel are important for you guys to see. Uh, the first one being tasks. So this is that um, part of the project that you might set up with a template or you might uh, have a standard way of, of structuring your project. Uh, some might call these divisions, some might call these subjobs. I know um, working with different clients a lot have different terminology for this. But here on mine, I have general requirements, site work, concrete, etc. Uh, within each task, you can see I have the ability to create billing rules. So I can even go and, and have half of these lines uh, have a billing rule of progress billing and half might be time and materials. So that might be, you know, you might have a, a variation of billing for some of your projects. And you can see right to the left of that, the allocation rules. I can also build in plan start and end dates at the task level and actual start and end dates uh, and use this as a, sort of a mini calendar if you wanted to um, create a dash part that was looking at these tasks and seeing if you were, um, staying in sort of in compliance with what you have set up or if something is overdue uh, and set that up as a dash part, that's a, a common feature. So the tasks are going to flow through our cost budget. So here I'm going to go to cost budget and you can see my project tasks here on the left hand side. And then I'm going to have a cost code, so whatever your cost code structure is. Um, and you can see my descriptions here. Once again, I'm going to have that column configurator. So I have account groups hidden, but if you wanted to show that, and definitely toggle that up and, and rearrange these however you might want. Uh, you are able to do that here. Okay. Um, the other Bring those a little bit closer to my cost code or right at the beginning, however you want to structure that. I can also do a roll up group by task. So if you ever wanted to see something at a summary level, you can roll this up and group this by task here. And unroll it to see the detail. So once again, you determine what columns you want to 
have on the screen uh, what what you're um, what you're used to seeing. There's also a filter button. So if you ever wanted to create different views, you can create different views and toggle between um, you know your your preferences here. You know maybe you wanted to only have a commitment view and only look at tasks 01. You have the ability to create all kinds of views. And that's not only on this screen, that's going to be, uh, you're going to see this, what I'm going to say is a funnel or a filter on uh, most of the screens as I go through Acumatica. Some important features to point out right here, there's an Excel, an Excel feature right here. You can export this to Excel. Um, and right to the right of that is load records from file. So if I wanted to upload, maybe I was, um, using a, some sort of Excel-based estimating tool, and I create my estimate and my budget in there, I can very quickly upload that file onto this page, and I would not have to then individually key all of those lines of a budget in here. So it's a really nice tool to be able to load records from file, whether it's on this budget screen, uh, you know, whether it's a detailed purchase order, whether it's a journal entry, you're gonna see the load records from file button throughout the program also. A very powerful feature. Um, before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and get a, give a little presentation of that. Just so you can see, I'm opening up a project called Tank2. I'm going to go to my cost budget here, and I only have one line. So let's pretend I created an estimate in Excel. I'm going to go ahead and pick a file and I'm going to upload it just to give you an idea of what that would look like. First, I'm going to say OK through some common settings. Then the next pop-up you see, this is where you can map the columns. Mine are already mapped, but if, you're, if you didn't have something mapped, you would click on the right-hand side, click the down arrow, and then you're going to see the options of where you can map your columns to. So pretty, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. I'm going to just say OK here. And now you can see I got this green check mark here. The operation is completed in the upper right hand corner. And it brought in all of my lines of that budget that I had on that Excel worksheet. So that's how quick it is to you know, really upload a file into Acumatica and save all of that time uh, keystrokes and entering that. Uh, we do have a direct integration with ProS. Uh, but if you, know, you use some other system and Excel might be the way to go, just know that that all right, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to come into back into my hotel project screen and revenue budget. This is where you would do your billing from. Uh, so you would come here, you would either determine your percent complete. So if you're, say you're going to bill this line of conveying systems, let's see, I'm going to 50% complete. You can see I'm at a pending invoice amount here. Or I could have done a dollar amount there. Um, you have the option of doing dollars or percents. And you literally come to the top and you run your project bill. That easy. Uh, so here, mine is uh, progress billing. If I wanted time, if I had time and materials, it would be on this next tab here where it says time and material. And then from here, I can come up to the top and pr produce my. AIA report, and here I have my AIA report. So that gives you an idea of how fast it is to uh, do your progress billing and uh, produce your pro forma here in Acumatica. And on my invoices tab, here is where that flows to. So my, my pro forma is on the left, currently on hold, but once I approve that, and release it, it creates an AR invoice, and that's when it would actually post to my general ledger. So I can change it and revise it, and you know, how many ever, however many times I need to on the pro forma step, and then uh, once I'm good to go and I got the, the right approval, I can go ahead and, and release it and create my invoice. All right, so that gives you an idea of the AIA form, how easy it is to produce and progress billing, um, and I could have had other forms there, so if you don't use AIA, if you had other formats, I could have, you know, as many different 
templates there to pick from as you might have for your billing. Uh, commitments are just that. This is where you would come to create a PO, create a subcontract right from this screen here. And then you can always, you're going to have your, your um, statuses here of your commitments. Always can filter those down if you wanted to change your fees. Uh, continuing on, I have change requests. We have a very powerful uh, change management piece in Acumatica. So we have the ability to create, I'm not going to be able to do it today, but project issues to RFIs, to change requests, or a, a combination thereof. Uh, change requests can then be made into change orders. You can pick and choose uh, what change requests or what change orders you want to pick. So a very nice uh, workflow on the change management piece. And then continuing down, activities history. So think of this as kind of a, I want to say a mini CRM within the project screen, but it gives you the ability to put a, a tickler task out there for yourself or, or send, you know, note an activity done on this project or uh, schedule an appointment for yourself or a phone call or whatever that is. Or maybe you just want to see what other activities somebody else did, and you can come into this screen and see that activity uh, right here. Also can set up unions um, if you had specific equipment you wanted to use on this project. Uh, in this case, we have a concrete pump we brought in and our run rate for that and our setup rate, et cetera. Uh, you can bring in pieces of equipment. And then we have additional settings here, so if you had some um, compliance on this project. Uh, here I have a certificate of insurance. It appears to be out of compliance. My document is expired. So when you see the yellow exclamation points, it means we have a problem, something's expired. Um, it's going to be staring you in the face here with the, the compliance. You're also able to, um, you'll see this paper clip here on the left-hand side. So you're also able to store that image. So if I click on that, you can see I have an attachment, an OSHA cert, and here I would be able to have my attachments uh, for my certificates or whatever else you needed to track there. Um, you can track the documents and attach documents at the line level here on the left by that paper clip, and also on this Files button at the top. You can see on the Files button here, I have two items. If I you know, click into one, this is my change order. Um, and it, you can drag and drop into the screen. So if I take something from my other monitor, right now I have two files attached, and I drag and drop this image, you can see right now I have three files. So I can drag and drop it right onto the screen. Now I have a floor plan I just dragged over, or I can browse out for this. So you don't have to drag and drop. If you would rather browse out for something, um, you are able to do that as well. The neat thing about these file attachments, if I click Edit, you also have the ability to do versioning. So I only, this is, I just added this, I only have one version. But if I had multiple versions, if I wanted to see, you know, who created it, who, uh, what day and time was it, was it created, um, you're always able to see versioning. You're also able to check out files and update them. So another powerful feature of Acumatica would be that file attachment. To the left of file attachments, you're able to also add notes to this record. That can be done also at the header level and at the line level, right next to the paper clip on a specific line. I would be able to click on that and add notes there also. And lastly, um, we have the ability to create lien waivers. If you wanted to create li different lien waiver settings, um, mine in this particular one, I have it set up to do, uh, for my vendors classified as subcontractors, I have my, my setting is just set to create a lien waiver for $1,000 or, or more for my invoices. But um, different ways to set up different lien waivers uh, and different settings associated with that, whether it's the project, whether it's a vendor class, or whether it's a vendor. There's a couple different levels and ways uh, to set up that. 
While I won't go into it today, we do have a project budget forecast tool as well um, and a cost projection. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and hit that. I'm not sure if I'll, if I'll be able to, but I will definitely try. Depending on our time, I sometimes get long-winded, so apologize for that. Um, okay, so that's a little bit about our projects. Um, what I wanted to quickly do, I'm going to uh, switch screens here for one second. So now I'm in my Outlook. Um, and before I forgot, I want to make sure I showed this, the Acumatica plugin. So I'm in my Outlook. I have an Acumatica uh, button up at the top here. And assuming nothing fell asleep, this should work nicely for me. Uh, so what this is, is this is a plugin um, for um, Outlook to Acumatica. So you can set this up with different um, ways to uh, quickly get information from your Outlook into Acumatica. So let's say I have an Avalara email here. Let's say I wanted to quickly create a project issue. Just use your imagination a little bit. I'm gonna click that button. It's gonna bring the summary from the email title right into my summary for this. But I have that direct link into Acumatica. So I'm able to come here. I can search for my project. I'm gonna pick my hotel project. I can search my uh, class ID, change my, um, my you know, due date for this if I wanted to put it in the future for somebody to resolve this issue. Um, the owner's Maxwell Baker. He happens to be the project manager. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create that project issue. So it's that quick, whether it's taking something from Outlook to do an issue, an RFI, or if you're using uh, maybe CRM and you wanted to create a lead or a contact or something like that, I believe you can also set up opportunities here. Um, mine just doesn't happen to be set up that way, but uh, just know that there's a couple other features you can do there. So let's see if my system has fallen asleep here real quick. I go ahead and open up my project manager dashboard. And here is what it just created. So I'm on my PM dashboard, and you can see here, Avalara News Hotel Project. This is what it just did. This is how quick that information is gonna get from your Outlook using that plugin into Acumatica. In this case, this project issue, if somebody had emailed you something, um, you can get it in here. Uh, you can set up notifications. So let's say anytime a project issue came on board, um, you know, Kathy Sherman wanted a, a text message or a push notification or an email notification. Uh, we have the ability to set up uh, different notifications uh, for these, you know, depending on how you want to be notified so that when an issue comes in for the um, hotel project, you know, maybe I want to set push notification on my smartphone. Uh, we can do things like that um, uh, with Acumatica. So it's very powerful in that respect. Uh, so that's how quick it can get in from your Outlook plugin. Um, I said I would show you the assignment and approval map, so let me get there. Show you a little bit about that. So this is that assignment and approval map. So what this means is it gives me the ability to create different those different routing and approval um, rules for different parts of the program. So you can see here from my list, you know, whether it's change orders, RFIs, project issues, expenses, uh, AP invoices, maybe AP bills with, I'm gonna click on this one, multi-lines of approval. So maybe it's just not one person that's approving this, but maybe we break our AP invoices out by department. And you can see on the left, I have line approvals by department. So for each different line, we have different conditions on the right and different rule actions on these two tabs. So really the configuration, you know, maybe it goes to these departments first and then it might go to the controller or an owner or something like that. It might have a multi-level um, approval like that. Or you might have a different, maybe it's not departments, maybe it's de um, uh, dollar amounts. Maybe you have different rules and, and different rule actions depending on dollar amounts. So I uh, have a lot of uh, different options here. Uh, not only, like I mentioned, on the accounts payable side, 
for routing and approval, but really throughout the program. You can see down the list, a PO group approval or two-step approval. So once again, another um, very powerful, <clears throat> um, very powerful feature of Acumatica. Go ahead and jump to. I'm going to go to compliance. I lied. I'm going to go to project management and show you a couple things in project management. Um, if you have seen Acumatica before, and I, I'm not sure if anyone on on this. Um, Lunch and Learn has seen it before, but we now have uh, some additions, uh, recent additions, the most recent being submittals. So we're pretty excited about that, uh, being able to create submittals in the program um, and being able to build out that project management piece. Um, I mentioned uh, project issues. I'm going to go ahead and go in there. And I'm going to go ahead and open up. So here's a project issue. Um, this one is issue 20. It's also for my hotel job. My details are floor, floor buckled, et cetera. Um, and these could have been created from the, the smartphone, could have been created from the field, or could be created here in the program, which also actually could be on the field if they're having a tablet or a, um, a laptop in the field. Uh, gives you the ability, though, to create these you can create different types. This one on the right happens to be a design issue. It has a schedule impact, five days here. Uh, but what I wanted to draw your attention to is the middle, uh, where it says um, RF0007. So we have the ability to, up at the top, it's grayed out. But if you wanted to um, create this, uh, convert this to an RFI or convert this to a change request, uh, we have that workflow as I mentioned earlier, to go from an issue to that other. Um, there. And then I have the hyperlink. So if I wanted to click on that hyperlink and go into my RFI, you can see converted from my issue. So you're always going to get that trail of where did this come from, uh, what was it converted to, hyperlink back and forth, and you're able to um, do that and see that history. Now I'm in an RFI. Um, I have my question here for an RFI. Um, I can, if I wanted to, I could um, print my RFI. An idea of what that would look like. Or if I wanted to, um, maybe I wanted to um, send the RFI, you can email this right out of the system. Or if you wanted to, um, if you email it right out of the system, you have the ability for them to answer it and have it come right back into the system. So very powerful. Um, if they don't, I believe it's if they don't change the description of the email, it will come back into Acumatica and it will populate the response for the RFI. So that's a powerful tool there. Uh, also have the ability to create daily field reports. So I'm going to go ahead and open up one of these daily field reports. And once again, you're going to see these tabs across the middle. So first tab in the daily field report being my time, uh, labor time and activities. So if you wanted to have, for example, a superintendent entering time for the crew, they can open up the DFR, they can create uh, all of their um, labor for their crew here, or if it's just for themselves, that's fine too. They can just enter the time for one person. Uh, change requests, if they wanted to create a new change request on this day, able to do that. Change orders as well. Uh, subcontractors, if you wanted to track what subs worked on your project, you would be able to list them here. I had two, Hanson Excavating and a surveying company. How many workers were here? What time did they arrive? What time did they depart? So able to track subs per day. Project issues, did we have any issues today? Did we have any altercations? You might need to um, note that on your uh, daily field reports. Photo logs, I'm able to upload photos. So I'm able to do that through the daily field report where there is a separate photo log where if you're taking you know, project photos every day and creating that log, you're able to do that in Acumatica. 
um, weather. We have a direct tie-in to a couple of the free weather services. So if you wanted to load your weather conditions from um, one of those services, it will populate this, this row here and you wouldn't have to key in all the weather for your daily field report. Mark your visitors. So who visited us today? Um, what time did they arrive? What time did they depart? Did I have any employee expenses? Do I want to create a new expense receipt? I could do that right from the DFR today, right from the same screen. So then if I wanted to um, do a quick print preview of what this looks like, it will go section by section for the DFR. And also if you needed it to incorporate photos, um, it would do that as well. A couple different ways to set that up. So that is our daily field report. And I mentioned photo logs. Um, we also have drawing logs. So if you're, if you're needing to create drawing logs, you can do that as well. So that would round out our project management piece. Uh, in the essence of time, I believe I am running out of time. I, I want to jump real quick to two areas uh, before I give it back to Gib. Um, one being finance. So there's a lot of uh, information here in this section. What I really wanted to focus on, I'm going to go ahead and run a profit and loss statement. I know I talked about that earlier. Uh, let's see, I'm going to go back to October and run this report. So this is where I talked about if you had different legal entities and you're consolidating um, them. So there is a tree, br tree button on the profit and loss uh, ribbon here at the top. And you can see I now have all of my entities. Once I clicked on that, that have expanded here. So this is at the, the top level, the one I have now. But if I wanted to run uh, the P&L for just my products company, or maybe um, my services East branch, as I, t as I click the different entities and branches, it's going to change my results here on the right-hand side and let me see the different financials for the different branches. So it's really how did we structure this and being able to get this information um, by clicking that the different entities. And the balance sheet is going to work the same way. I run this balance sheet real quick. I am going to have the same tree and I would be able to toggle between the different entities and run my balance sheet for that. And lastly, because, because of the structure and how we're able to handle different entities, we are also able to handle intercompany transactions. So let's say, oh, I don't know, you wanted to, um, you have rental expenses that you needed to allocate between branches. How about that? And I'm going to go ahead and open up this allocation that was, that was run here on my sample company. So what it, based on the formula and how you're, how you're telling the system, you want to allocate, in this case, it's rent expense, um, it would be able to create this allocation entry. And you can see on the bottom part, portion, if, you, if you're in accounting and you handle any of this, the do to do froms are going to then be produced as part of the allocation entry. So hopefully saving you, uh, from what I've seen in a lot of companies, just uh, many, many hours worth of work to get this type of, um, get this type of functionality automated. Um, when you have different things like allocations and uh, you want to automate it, we have a scheduler. So you're always able to, I'm going into one now just to, to show you, you're always able to create these automation schedules. And not just in, not just in uh, the finance area, it could be oh, for different service billing, maybe you want to run service billing once a day or something like that. You can create this, uh, this automation schedule. You can set it to run, whether daily, weekly, maybe at the end of the month. You know, what time do you want it to run? And this can be set up so you're not having to think about it. You're not having to run it. It's going to run behind the scenes, you know, maybe at midnight, if that's the best time uh, for you to run that. All right. Or I turn things over to Gib. Go ahead. I mentioned service management. Um, so we have a full service piece here in Acumatica. Um, we have the ability to create, I'm just going to point at the top, and, and from that diagram earlier, 
we can create work orders. We can create multiple appointments as they relate to those work orders, service orders. We can also tie uh, an appointment to a construction project. So maybe you don't necessarily do service per se, but you might want to schedule some of your team on appointment for some type of service work related to a project. That might be a nice fit for that piece also. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up a calendar board just to give you a visual. And that should be coming up on your screen now. So if you had on the left-hand side unassigned appointments or service orders that you needed to drag and drop to your team here on the right, uh, we have the ability to set up uh, different different color codes representing you know, different information. We can set up different filters and views. Uh, mine is set for one branch and one branch location. I also have a staff calendar board. So if I just wanted to see one individual, I can narrow it down from that as well. I have the ability to double click. It's going to open up a window on the right-hand side. It's going to tell me basically, you know, this actually does relate to a project 107. Um, what are the services that they're doing? Uh, who's the staff that's scheduled? Two of them are scheduled on this, both Pam and Rick. Uh, so you're able to um, double click, get that information. I wanted to drill down into this um, service work order. I can, there's a hyperlink there and I can get to that also. Uh, we also have the ability to have um, equipment, both uh, client equipment company equipment, we also have the ability to do service contracts. So if you wanted to maybe have an preventative maintenance type contracts and you needed those serviced you know, quarterly or annually, uh, we have the ability to do that as well. All right, um, I'm gonna pause now and see if Gib is available and if Gib has- I am. <laughs> returned. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> I apologize, it's allergy season and all of a sudden I could feel that tickle and I couldn't get, I, I knew I was going to cough and I couldn't speak at the same time. So my apologies, <laughs> but uh, you know, that was the best part because we actually did the meat and potatoes, which is the most important part is, is taking a look at the application. So. All right. Sorry about that. Got it set up. I have to swap. There we go. That should be good. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to highlight just some of the, uh, the usability and, and some of the acc uh, accolades that Acumatica has received, but really the highest in, in usability, you saw hopefully from the user interface today, um, just how high Acumatica ranks. Let's see here, again. there we go. Uh, PC Editor's Choice four years in a row. It's a, that's, a, that's a great statement in itself. 6,500 customers across the uh, across the world. Um, important that Acumatica is a worldwide uh, application. Uh, Net Promoter Score, the highest in the industry, uh, about 33. Uh, is no, nobody in the software industry comes anywhere near close to that. That's a testament to the uh, to the customer satisfaction. Uh, the ability to run both on AWS and Azure. This is the open architecture we talked about. Um, the ability to integrate, and hang on a second, I've got a cough coming. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, we talked about, and Kathy talked about Procore, ProEst, um, Adobe, DocuSign, ADP, just all these different independent software vendors, and there's over 150 of them to integrate. So if there's something that Acumatica can't do, there's probably a, uh, an, an application that can integrate and, and accomplish that function. Uh, Kathy did highlight on security where we have the ability to lock down security. Um, this slide I really love. It's uh, the ability to run on any device from anywhere. Um, and you see that on there, there's an Alexa's, uh, or Alexa device. And you can actually create through machine language that's in, incorporated in Acumatica, the ability to talk to an Alexa device and have it actually perform functions within Acumatica. Um, deployment, you can deploy both uh, in the cloud, which is probably what I'm going to say probably 95 to 98% of the Acumatica users are deployed in the cloud. 
But you can deploy on a private cloud. You can even deploy locally on a hosted server in your own four walls. So you have the option as to how you want to deploy Acumatica. As far as licensing, this is also something very unique in the industry. Where Acumatica gives you the ability to do what we call uh, consumption-based pricing. So it's based on um, transactions that you utilize within your, within your organization. That's how the pricing is set up. And you, then in essence, you have 100% 100, uh, 100 of all your users can access Acumatica. There's no limit uh, by, by, by user count. Uh, data, data ownership, very important. Um, some cloud providers own your data when you run on their data center. Uh, with Acumatica, you can take your data anywhere you want. You can uh, back it up onto your own server if you'd like. You can move from a private cloud to a public cloud or vice versa, and uh, Acumatica doesn't care. Uh, as far as training, there's an online university that's incorporated with Acumatica, so it's free. Um, some vendors like to create a, 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 a a profit center for education, uh, Acumatica offers that as part of the online uh, uh, training. I'd like to, to show the, uh, what's called the Customer Bill of Rights, and uh, this is very important. Uh, this was brought up actually in the Acumatica Summit, and uh, John Roskill, who's the, the President and CEO, went through this and, and created this and thinks that, uh, you can just read through it, that customers have the rights to an easy to use uh, license agreement uh, open platform, consumption-based licensing, uh, sustainable pricing with annual increases of no more than 3% per year, um, no hidden fees, you can access your data at any time, uh, consistent 24-7 customer service, uh, local business expertise, and Acumatica sells all of their applications exclusively through their partner channel. So there's no direct sales force uh, within Acumatica, so they rely on people like ourselves and Action Associates and I'll talk about us in a moment. Um, just some highlights of what's coming out. Acumatica produces two major releases every year, one in the spring, which is just released, which is 2020 R1. And in the fall, there'll be a 2020 R2. And um, so very important to know that. And Acumatica likes uh, to try to keep people as current as possible. Um, some highlights, and I just highlighted a few based upon our, our audience today, but um, the ability to capture images using a mobile device. Uh, Acumatica Payroll is new for this particular release and it's construction related. So it does all the, all the functions that you need with a construction payroll. Um, the expense receipt from a camera image, that's really nice. That uh, overlays all the different applications. Um, and then in construction, I know Kathy highlighted a few of those in the presentation, uh, the daily field reports with the weather service that you saw uh, with photo logs. A little bit about why action. Um, we've been in business for 41 years. Uh, we have revenues over $40 million. Uh, we sell next generation uh, software solutions. We produce successful ERP go lives uh, and we're a leading partner. In fact, we're a gold certified partner with Acumatica. Um, we're, so we're a top tier distributor or, or partner with, with Acumatica. We've got almost 200 employees, over 5,000 customers. Um, and so we, uh, cover the actually the entire United States. Um, two company-owned data centers, so we do host applications, uh, some of them not related to Acumatica, but we, uh, we have two open uh, company-owned data centers. Some of our recognitions, um, we're a top 20, uh, top 20 VAR in the, in the country, so we, we've done a, uh, quite a bit in our, in our 41 years of, of being in business. Some of our brick and mortar locations, our headquarters is in Maumee, Ohio. Uh, we have an office in Charlotte, which is where our other data center is, uh, Long Island, and in, uh, in just outside of Phoenix in Glendale, Arizona. We have four different divisions, uh, our construction division, the distribution division, which is uh, supply chain distribution manufacturing, uh, multi-industry, which is the industry that we're responsible for, uh, and that is people that are not only in construction, that Acumatica services, but manufacturing and distribution, or any combination thereof. And we're finding that a lot of businesses now, especially even in construction, um, may have a manufacturing component as well. Hey, I, I, I build this and then I go out and, and install it and service it. So I incorporate different parts of the industry. And then we have a technology division, which is our data centers and hosted applications, uh, infrastructure for, you know, for people that have uh, 
network infrastructure. We do all that in our technology division. So, as I mentioned, in our multi-industry, we handle construction, distribution, and manufacturing. And we're very ver vertically into, uh, focused, and that's a really key component. We have industry experts in all of our business units, but especially in construction, it's been a core part of our business since uh, the inception of, of Action Associates. So, uh, I think really there's a couple of customers we have focused here in our multi-industry. Uh, just some some people that we put up. We've implemented over 50 Acumatica implementations and have a, a very robust staff of folks to uh, support and service Acumatica. So now we're going to open it up and uh, and hopefully we have some questions and hopefully they're related to Kathy and not me. <laughs> so um, I would like to uh, open up the microphones if we have any questions or, or uh, we've been monitoring also if you have any that you push through the chat feature in the in the uh, WebEx, we can answer those now. But I did want to talk to a feature and if you set up a subsequent presentation, I will definitely show the app. It's a pretty powerful feature. But what's new and what I was uh, hoping to show is that uh, what you can do is you can create, um, there's OCR capabilities. So if you have an expense receipt and you snap a photo um, mm -hmm. for our expense management now, it's going to read that receipt and it's going to populate the amount and the description and the date. And it's part of our new release. So it's a really exciting feature and I apologize for not being able to show it. Um, I have tested it, it works well. Uh, so just know that that's out there and Acumatica uh, continues to provide the cutting edge technology um, and, you know, and they're continuing to do so. So it, it's an exciting time for the product um, and that's one of the, um, the newest features that came out about a week ago or so. Uh, so just know that it's out there and I promise I would, I'll show it next time. <laughs> that's, that's really what I was gonna show, Lauren. And I want to add one more thing before we get to questions. I think the most important thing that uh, to take away from today, especially with what we've gone through over the last couple of months, is the ability to be able to access Acumatica from anywhere on any type of device uh, has really helped with people that have had to be, you know, stay at home and work and, and access their information. Uh, sometimes with legacy systems, it's very hard to remotely communicate into that um, and, and remote desktop applications and things of that nature. Uh, has been a struggle for a lot of people. So I think that's an important thing. Uh, I just want to make note that, that Acumatica, it's, it's business as usual from no matter where you are. So any, any questions out there, Lauren? I do not see any coming in. Uh, again, guys, if you want to have any questions, feel free to type them in in the chat uh, Q&A box and I'll uh, ask them, ask uh, Kathy and Gib. Um, otherwise, any other points we want to touch on? I, think, I am good. I, think, I just wanted to make sure I showed, um, talk to, at least talk to that OCR capability. Right. Well, we hope you enjoyed your lunches today. Um, that was uh, uh, nice to have a Grubhub difference, of, uh, maybe a different from a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or <laughs> whatever it may be that you're used to at home. So uh, I guess if there's no more questions, I'd like to say thank you to everybody for joining us today. And, uh, and spending the lunch with us. And, and uh, we hope to hear from you and, and hope we spark some interest in Acumatica. All Thanks, right. Jim. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.